Hello, we're back with five guys and a Bible. And today we have a question that has been asked of us several times. And we have yet to give it a good answer because we haven't known exactly how to answer it, to be honest with you. We don't know how much detail to get into and how much detail to leave out. So we have decided that we're going to answer this in a pretty general way. Our goal is not to convince preachers out there of what they're using or what they should be using. Uh, most of the people that watch us and most people that ask are people like just your everyday church member, and they want to know what we think is the best Bible version. So we're going to try to keep it to that. And if you have further questions about this, you can uh, certainly private message us, and we'll be happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one about that as well. So we're going to start off with... Mark Campbell, Mark uh, is actually up in my upper right-hand corner, so we're going to start off with him, and uh, <laughs> all right, Mark, you take it away. Well, I have been going last recently, but I asked to go first on this one just because I really don't have a lot to contribute other than the fact that, you know, I use the King James Bible I probably always will use the King James Bible. I was taught that that's the only thing that I should use, and I didn't really know why. I just stood that way because that's what people told me that I should do. Now if I've done a little more study, I, I find out that there are some other things that are out there that are usable. Here, here's how I do it. I, I preach from the King James. I study the King James. My daily Bible reading, I use the New King James, thanks to Todd, um, the Chronological Study Bible. When I study a passage, I will use Strong's Concordance and Vine's Expository Dictionary to explain words a little more fully um, what, I, what, I, what I don't maybe clearly understand. And then I have, I have a Bible program that has several translations on it. I'll click through some of those just to see what it has to say. It sometimes helps me understand the sentences and the wording um, a little more fully. Um, so that's the way that I handle it. Um, and it. And it works good for me. I, I think I can get everything that I need from studying it that way. Um, the ease of reading sometimes different with, uh, like the New King James, the Bible that I'm reading is in paragraph form, and for a daily Bible, Reading in a paragraph form, man, that is fantastic for me. So I enjoy it that way. Um, but that's what I use, and it works for me. And um, so uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, for the most part, King James, read New King James and study any other version if I want to help find out what a sentence means. And I guess I'll quit. All right. I'm going to move up to Jason. We wanted to start off with Mark just to kind of give a general view, but we're going to head up to Jason, and then we're going to follow up with Troy and then move to Todd and me. That's kind of the general plan in this. And the reason we're doing this is because you will see a little bit of division on us uh, and uh, what our opinions are or not. And we want you to be aware, aware of that. It's not huge divisions. You know, we believe in the literal word of Christ. That's what we're, that's what we're after. That's what we, our desire is. Uh, but we're going to move things up to Jason and let him take things from there. Yeah, um, you know, there's so many, there's so much detail that we could get into, right? And the places where we disagree is generally going to be found in that detail. So um, unless we're going to do a three-hour video, <laughs> and I don't know if three hours you take it, uh, but unless we're going to do a three-hour video, we're just not going to get into the whole debate, right? I mean, already Todd's ready to take a nap. So... We're, uh, we're trying to keep it short. Um, in keeping it short, the best way for me to explain it is I am most comfortable with the um, text family that's behind the King James Version and the New King James Version of the Bible. Um, I'm a King James guy myself. Um, I preach from it. I teach from it. It's, you know, what I use and what I'm comfortable with. Um, I don't have any issue with the New King James Version, or at least any more issue than I have with any other Bible version, including the King James. Um, 
I, I did want to add, there's this interesting statement that was made in the preface of the King James Version where the King James translators themselves said, the very meanest translation of the Bible, and by that, they didn't mean the best. <laughs> they were talking to the other end, right? The very meanest translation of the Bible in English set forth, forth by men, they say, contains the word of God. Um, and I agree with them on that. I, I think that's true. And while we could have a lot of fun debating the details of why I, I think King James and New King James is best um, and spend a lot of time trying to persuade you that that's the case, the reality is the Bible that you use, assuming that it's a, a literal translation of the Bible, the Bible that you use is going to have God's word in it, you would do good to follow it. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have is people, regardless of what Bible translation they use, they just want to ignore what it says, right? And and so you don't want to do that. Um, for my answer, uh, I'm pretty strong King James Version, uh, like the new King James Version too, and I guess with that I'll kick it to somebody else. All right, that takes us over to Troy McGahan. Well, um, I would agree so far with what has been spoken. Uh, I think Brother Jason has uh, summed it up very well. I am a King James man, I use, and by that, I use a King James. I am, uh, I am not anti-New King James. Uh, I will say that until someone can show me some things that, and I mean by this, really show me some things where it changes it, I, I'm not going to be opposed to it. My big thing is this. If you're going to use a Bible, use something that is a literal translation. Not as some say a dynamic equivalent. Uh, use something that is a literal word-for-word -word translation. Now, and in saying that, I use the King James. That's what I study from. That's what I preach from. And uh, when people step in our pulpit here at any church I've ever pastored before or here at Friendship Baptist Church, that's what they use. Now, having said that, too, a lot of times a term, and I want to address this for the common folk that, you know, and I don't mean that the folks that don't know anything. I'm just talking about your average everyday person. Not for preachers, but your average day, every, your average layman. Um, there's a term that is used called King James only. And I've had people ask me, well, well, Troy, are you King James only? If you mean by King James only, then I believe that you can only be saved from the preaching and teaching of the King James Version of the Bible or that as I study the King James, or I preach from it, that I never look at like Greek helps or Hebrew helps for the Old Testament, then I would say absolutely not. I'm not King James only. Because I do look at the Greek words, because sometimes it does help in explaining. It does help for definitions and so forth. So do I use a King James Bible? Absolutely. Do I preach from it? Yes. Do I have confidence that it is God's word? Yes. But I am not willing to go to the place that I am not King James only in the sense that only people are saved from the preaching and teaching of the King James Bible. So that's what I have. I'll pass it on. All right. That moves us down to Todd Bryant. I wish I could see the picture that you're seeing, John, since you're the recorder, so I knew where I was on the screen. It looks completely different when I go back and watch it because I don't Absolutely. get Absolutely. You're on the bottom. <laughs> I guess I ought to talk. Jason's nervous, so let me get let me get going with it. Um, the last time I read, I am the different guy here. The, the last time that I read the King James Version is the last time I preached at another church. I, I never read it. I, I'm not opposed to it in any way. I, I, I love the King James in a lot of ways. I was brought up with it. 
cut my teeth on it, all those things, but I don't study it. And I read it when I go somewhere else and preach. I, I never preach from it. Um, I do oftentimes, if I'm studying something like Mark, I may use the King James as a reference, you know, exactly how they translated a word or, or something like that. Uh, the church here has used the, the New King James Version for better than 10 years. Uh, we've been really blessed in it, and, and we've enjoyed it. Though I'm not dogmatically Byzantine text. Uh, I don't think Jason was saying he was dogmatically Byzantine text, but he preferred it. Um, you know, I, I I really think Nestle Allen did a great job with their their text. I think that they're really really good guys, and I think you could probably put them, you know, right there. They did a lot of good research. The ESV is based upon that particular text. Now we're not getting deep into the textual issues, but I will say this: no New Testament doctrine is hurt by a textual variant because nothing's deleted as far as you know all of the truths that we all believe and the five guys has been talking about we could do it from any bible version um we don't but we could because they're all there none of us probably are fans of the niv but not because of the text per se but because it's not literal there's it, it's a very dynamic equivalence version in other words, they take the Greek and they try to tell you what it means. Well, the problem with that is that they're telling you what they think it means, but they're not 100% sure. So regardless of the, the text, I do want a Bible that is more literal. Now, they've all got a little bit of dynamic to them just because of translating from one language to another, but you're going to limit yourself really quickly if you want a literal version. You can get the you, unless you get a really old version like the Geneva or something like that, something that's readily available, you got King James, you got New King James, you got American Standard, you got New American Standard, and you got ESV. That's it. I, I could preach from any one of those and be totally fine because I believe they're all good reflections of, of uh, Marcus holding up his finger. What about Holman Christian Standard Bible? Do you know yeah, about I, it? I am, you know, I'm one of these goofy guys that reads a different Bible version every year. It's funny you ask that. I am ha about a third of the way through the Holman Christian Standard right now. I think the Holman Christian Standard is better than the NIV, but I don't think it's as good as the ESV. They take too much liberty in some places, and I'm not real comfortable with it. But um, yeah, I, I really could preach from any of those. I, I like them. I love the ESV. I think it's very beautiful. In fact, if you read it, you can tell that they really use the King James as a basis in a lot of ways. They just, you know, prefer Nestle Allen's text. But it's a really good translation. But anyway, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm just like Jason said. I will, if whatever Bible you use, read it and follow it and do it. Because all of the problems we have out here in Christianity were here before any modern Bible versions came out. They're going to hang around, and it's because people aren't believing what the Bible sitting in front of them has to say. That's all I got. All right, that finishes with me. Now, as far as my history goes, just like most of all these men right here, I've been raised with the King James Version of the Bible. That's what I preach from. That's what we use here in our church. I like having one Bible that everybody uses in the church. That just it, it seems to work well. Um, it, it's less confusion. Uh, when I go to Brother Todd's church and preach there, I will preach out of the New King James, and I, I have no problem in doing that, uh, and that's because that's what most of the people in his church use as well. Uh, now, I will say this. You know, the in, in the 1611 translation, in that preface, it, it talks about the need of having a Bible in the vulgar tongue, that is, the common tongue of the people, and... I think really that's a, that's a big deal. I think they understood that. I, I, the, the people that are so dogmatically King James only, I don't, I don't think any of the translators on the, the King James uh, translation would have been so dogmatic about their own translation to say that this is the only Bible. It's been re-inspired from the, you know, the Greek, that type of thing that people often get off into. Um, so I, I preach from the King James Version of the Bible. I love the King James Version of the Bible. I think it's a great version. I read from the New King James Version all the time, and as far as the Nestle Allen text goes, I, I appreciate the work that they did with that, and I do 
also study the ESV uh, quite a bit. Uh, so when I study for a sermon, typically I've pulled up a parallel Bible on the computer and I've got King James, New King James, and ESV, and I may even throw ASV in there as well. Um, and when I'm feeling really sentimental, I'll look back at Geneva because I kind of like it too. Uh, so I, I look at them all. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I think that's really a good biblical approach. I think you really kind of gain what a verse has to say when you when you open up your eyes to kind of look a, a little bit outside of of the box a little bit. So that's where I stand, and I, I hope that makes sense, and uh, I hope it doesn't offend too many people that I, that I would actually do such a thing. So uh, with that, does anybody else have anything to add? If not, then we'll wrap up. Yep, one just, more. You know, just to real quick, sorry, don't, don't make panic. Uh, just to real quick sum up, I, I think it's fair to say that we all believe a Bible ver- using a good Bible version is important. We all agree that a literal translation is what you need. We just are obviously in disagreement about what one we would necessarily choose. I mean, there's not like a unanimous uh, Bible version amongst the five guys. And I guess that's the simplest answer to the question that we get asked. We still love each other. We love each other. Oh, I, love, I love at least three of the other four guys. I leave Troy out. As a matter of fact, right now, I want to give you all a big hug. Group hug. Group hug. <laughs> all right. Hey, Troy, that puts me in mind yeah. of your old Barney song. <laughs> I love you. You love me. <laughs> we need to support him. Yeah, but- all right. 20 seconds ago. <laughs> we should have stopped 20 seconds ago. Hey, if you stayed off this far, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Head over to fiveguysinabible.com. Ask your questions there or over to Facebook, Five Guys in a Bible. We'll try our best to get to them, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them as best and fully as we can. So with that, thank you for watching, and God bless. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>